Hi folks and welcome to Attica Armory. Alright, so today I just want to do a quick video on a common problem that I think a lot of people that have tractors with brush hogs seem to experience. And that is these back braces getting overly strained and stressed when you're uh, going over rough terrain and through ditches and whatnot. And you know, you can see these areas that kind of start getting a little bit hammered. And then eventually what you end up with is something like this where you just uh, get a full blown fracture and it breaks right off. Now, I've I've seen some different ideas. I've been kind of researching this a little bit and uh, just trying to figure out a way that I can rig something up where this doesn't continue to happen over and over again, where I have to keep, you know, either fabricating or buying new uh, back braces. And one of the ideas that people have come up with is instead of using uh, this this top link, uh, solid, you know, top link attachment here, they actually connect a chain and. Uh, there's been some concerns expressed by a number of people that there's uh, some safety issues with doing the chain up here now. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and leave this in place and come up with a little bit something different. So uh, sit tight for a second. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so as far as tools go, you don't need any special tools to do this job. Basically, I've got some combo wrenches for sockets. Um, a hammer in case you need to, maybe a pair, a couple pairs of pliers, uh, some gloves. Uh, you are going to want to use some thread locker blue. Now aside from chain, this is what I'm rigging it up with. So this here is called an anchor shackle. And um, this is actually a half inch anchor shackle right here. But what you want to do is make sure you measure those holes on your deck of your bush hog and make sure that um, it's compatible with the actual size of this portion of it here because this is not a half inch even though this is called a half inch this is five eighths of an inch that's a five eighths hole a little bit bigger than a five eighths hole so this thing fit pretty nicely and then i've also seen i've seen videos on youtube where people are like connecting this chain up with bolts and washers and nuts and stuff and I think it's just kind of ghetto. You don't want to do ghetto things when it comes to modifying something as dangerous as a bush hog, okay? So, you know, just float a few bucks, you know, I know hardware is expensive these days, uh, and get yourself some of these quick links, okay? This is a half inch quick link. It's pretty big uh, as far as size. So my 3 8 inch chain actually fits just right, nice and snug on this half inch quick link. And this thing's got a pretty beefy uh, payload. I think it does looks like 3,300 pound load limit, which is close to this chain. This chain's closer to 4,000 pounds, uh, 3 8 inch chain, but, uh, you know, quick link has definitely got enough there. And of course these anchor shackles, I believe these are rated at 4,000 pounds. So, you know, overall it's enough for this five foot brush hog. All right. So the first thing I did is I removed the entire back brace assembly, including this upper pivot. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to reuse that upper pivot uh, bolt and nut assembly. Now here's my logic, okay? I'm thinking that I don't want my chain inside of here rattling around. That's why I moved it from this, uh, this closer forward um, pinhole here to this farther back one. Uh, so basically that way my chain is just coming straight out the back. I also wanted it up higher, so it gives me a little bit more clearance away from the gearbox down here. All right, so it's probably also a good idea to take that other remaining uh, bolt and nut off of your um, your back brace upper swing arm assembly. So there should be one more over there. And I actually went ahead and just installed that right below the big main one that's going to hold my chain. And that'll just give this whole assembly some added rigidity. Another little side note too is, uh, yeah, you know, if you're not just a hardware hoarder like I am, or you've got extra washers and things hanging around all over the place, uh, you might want to get yourself some extra washers. Uh, this one's a little bit big here, but it's good enough. It's close enough. Um, but you know, that'll help with a little bit of the spacing issues that you're going to have. These spacers aren't quite long enough, so that'll kind of help to uh, add a little bit more spacing there. All right, now you can see here, I've got this thing all rigged up and I've got it elevated and it's pretty much leveled out right now at the top. So I'm content with where this is at. I might make some minor adjustments, um, but I'll probably just use that top link to make those adjustments at this point. So uh, basically, let me show you how I've got this rigged up. I started over here on one side. I ran my anchor shackle and uh, this chain actually won't just freely slide through this anchor shackle. So I kind of picked a spot and I created a loop and then I brought that loop around and uh, used that quick link and of course some uh, thread locker blue, ample thread locker blue and you know tightened it up. So I got thread locker on the anchor shackle and I got thread locker on that quick link. Okay, And then I ran that chain up 
through here, up and around, and down and under. And I brought it back over to this side, and I did the same thing. I found where my nice sweet spot is. I kind of had this thing down on the ground, and uh, then I went ahead and thread lockered, anchor, shackle, ran that through, and my chain was a bit longer. So I actually ran that extra long piece of chain back up here, and you can see how I connected it up here with another quick link. Now let me tell you why I put a quick link right here, okay? And I highly recommend that you do this because if something happens, if one of those anchor shackles breaks under pressure, it could send this chain flying forward, okay, and kind of whip this chain up and around this, and you really don't want that to happen. So what this will do is it'll kind of act as a fail safe, okay? So if something happens down here, one of these sides snaps off, you're at least not going to have this chain whipping up and around here and gaining momentum and potentially slapping you in the back of the head. Okay. So once I got this all rigged up afterwards, um, you know, I basically got it as tight as I could get it and as even as I could get it on both sides. This takes a little trial and error, but once I got it kind of hand tight and, you know, all of my attachments were sort of loosely hand tightened, then I came in up here and I did a few lifts. I turned the tractor on and I lifted it just to kind of see where it's at. And I did my final adjustments by basically pulling this top link back to tighten it to where I want it. So that's really about it. I mean, this thing is sweet. I may end up deciding to trim this chain, but I really don't like to trim chain because if I repurpose this chain at some point, you know, I, I'd like to have it all attached. So right now it doesn't seem to be bouncing around causing too many problems. Uh, so I'll show you what it looks like when it's down on the ground. Alright guys, I just wanted to give you a couple of quick little pointers because, you know, after you use this a little bit, you kind of learn a few things that I didn't really put into my initial recording as I was putting it together. So, first of all, I love this thing. Man, it is awesome. Um, especially doing brush hogging in reverse where you're running up against little inclines or declines. Awesome, awesome. I uh, wish I would have done this from the beginning. But you will notice a couple of things. So, when you're doing your initial adjustments, um, when I first raised this deck all the way up, I basically adjusted it where the deck was pretty much level to the ground when it was fully raised. Now what I found is that if it's level to the ground when it's raised all the way, it's actually going to be pointing too sharply forward when it's down on the ground. There's just too much tension on those, um, on those chains. So what I ended up doing is I just released a little bit of that tension. I loosened it out a little bit on that top link up there. And I basically ended up with a much better angle when it's down on the ground. Now that does result in the back end sagging a little bit when it's all the way raised up. It will kind of droop a little bit, but that's okay. It's still enough to get my back wheel off the ground and, you know, gives me plenty of clearance if I got to raise this thing to get up and over something real gnarly. Next thing I noticed too is that the chains will stretch a little bit. So obviously, I mean, I've got everything locked in real nice and tight. So I'm not like jumping links or anything here, but every chain will kind of stretch as it gets used and as it gets broken in. So after about two hours of brush hogging, I noticed that I had to go back to my top link here and fine tune my adjustments again. So as you're kind of getting this thing broken in and as you're first working it the first few hours, just make sure and check everything regularly, check all your connections, make sure everything's tight and you know, readjust as necessary. Anyway, hey, uh, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Please, please, if you're gonna do something like this, please take this job seriously. Anyway, I hope this was helpful and we'll see you again next time at Attica Armory.